in my car with our posada how are you doing john fishman so far two in at the 10 10 17 time stamp cards in my car with our posada sunny day is it sunny down there it's it's a uh, foggy and smoky hair Hello, John. Card to my car with our Posada. All right. Let's see if anybody comes in at the 1017 stamp here early this morning. We'll see what happens here. Uh, almost had a heart attack getting that set. Which one? The 1992? <laughs> Still ninth. There we go. Now we got John in there. Pulled a Lewis Robert Pink refractor yesterday. I know you sent me a message. I seen that message you posted up saying you were able to found some packs of cards. A Lewis Robert Pink refractor. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, now it is 1018. Robert Hone is in the house. Or I should say Robert, Robard Hone. Robard. Robard. <laughs> all right let me get my uh entries in here for uh my september giveaway my september giveaway we do have 12 more minutes before we get into our content at hand um let me get this in here there's one Let's see. Let me double check the chat here. Voice for John. Get John in here. save the file so we got all our entrance in for our September giveaway the giveaway is growing with nine cards this month and most likely for month number 12 December we will have 12 cards plus a bonus item for a good Christmas gift for someone all right so of course you'll receive it in January it'll be like Christmas in January when we get up to that 12th month for my be my my channel getting monetized January of this year all right so let me uh, get back into the stream here get ready to rock and roll with our programming today da -da 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 -da. so Robert John Fishman and cards in my car with our Posada just so you do know, we're doing the 1992 Denny's Grand Slam Saturday set. It's our Grand Slam Saturday Denny's product. And then we'll, uh, maybe I'll keep the name Grand Slam Saturday or come up with a, a theme for the name for Saturday's uh, content after we go through the complete Denny's set going through 1997. Right. So, other than that, I think everything will be good. I got two Kyle Lewis rookies, too, if you want them. That'd be cool to get a Kyle Lewis rookie card from, uh, I'm trying to remember the packs you opened. But, yeah, I will never pass on a Kyle Lewis, that's for sure. Um, after the end of the season when I'm pretty much done for this year's baseball card 
uh, searching and maneuvering. Uh, moon over over Hammy Monday. <laughs> Tops Chrome. There we go. Tops Chrome. Yes. I don't believe I have any Tops Chrome products yet. I don't believe I've got the the uh, Kyle Lewis. He's kind of petered out a little bit either that or they're starting to find out what he does when he pitches uh, they've been shutting him down here Lisa, lately but hopefully he can get a cup pop a couple more home runs he's in the running for the rookie of the year just ahead of Luis Robert in the White Sox probably because of his plays he's been making in the outfield along with hitting the ball you got to be an all-round faction there for uh rookie of the year so hopefully uh, I think I posted something the other day to some of the people that are familiar with me that uh, he is in the running up there with the top three or four players in the rookie field seven more minutes anything else anybody wants to talk about and then after we do preview the 1992 Denny's Grand Slam set we will be opening our next box in the search for autographs or short prints or um, serial numbered cards here uh, I pulled a 1959 Willie McCovey in 1959 no one to tell so I went back to the mine and loaded 16 tons of number nine coal and the straw boss said well bless my soul <laughs> Robert 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 says I have someone blocked when I go to your channel but I didn't block anyone that I know of it says I have someone blocked uh, hmm. but I don't know about hmm I'll have to try and check in let me let me check real quick let me see if I can look uh, da, 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 da. I don't know if I can do it right now while I'm in the live stream. But I will try to check and see if there's somebody blocked. Maybe that got blocked by accident. But I will check on that. Thanks there, John, for letting me know about that. So other than that, it's kind of, I mean, I look out my window and it's a gloomy, cloudy, foggy day. What a combination. Sorry, getting a sip of water. Plus, we, we have our house sealed off tighter than a drum so we don't get none of the smoke inside our house. Oh, my wife popped in here. Greetings all in the chat. Just here to say a quick hello. Hello. 
back to work later all. <laughs> she always likes to pop in and say hi once in a while. All right. So yeah, that is our outcome today. It's all it says when I go to the weather channel, it's it says unhealthy air quality due to smoke filled air. <laughs> That's pretty pretty odd. Oh, okay, it even shows on the there the air quality index is 185. Visibility is definitely less than a mile or just over a mile. UV index is one. But it shows I like that. It not only shows cloudy, it doesn't say it's rainy. It has the little lines of a, a unhealthy air quality, which doesn't happen too often except if you're in an area where there's lots of fires. But the humongous fires down in California and Washington and Oregon and I think we even have some now up in Canada to the north of us. So we're getting surrounded by unhealthy air. And we've got two more minutes to go. And then we will get into our content. Going through and reviewing this 1992 Denny's baseball card set. So let me just make sure here real quick. I think we're good there. that there make sure all my there we go leave the sound on just ever so lightly that way I get credit for a view on the channel don't forget thummies up thummies up thummies up for me looks like we do have five people in the chat and five thumbs up so we are doing good in that faction let me do a refresh on the uh, channel here all right, there we go. We got six, six thumbs up, six thumbs up, thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me. I'm gonna shake the camera a little bit. I forgot to fix my little cord so it does not get in my way here. I do leave my phone plugged in when I am doing my stream just to keep the battery up there so it doesn't die on me. So other than that, we are pretty much ready to go. We got a minute or less to go, and then I will get into highlighting each of these 26 cards in this 1992 Denny's Grand Slam set. So as soon as my clock says 10.30, uh, our Posada says, real unhealthy error. <laughs> Hi, Cynthia. No, I fo do. Hi, Cynthia. No, I fo do. No, I found out. Do. All right, we do have 1030, so we will get into our content at hand. Starting off with, I'll see if I can get them to reflect a little bit. This one's kind of nice. I like the different backgrounds they put in these hologram cards. Oh, you can see me in the background there. But this is Marquis Grism with the Montreal Expos, Expos Limited Edition Upper Deck Collector Set Grand Slam. This is number one of 26. So let's move on. So Marquis Grism with the Expos, card number one of 26, career Grand Slams, only one. But since making their National League debut in 1969, the Montreal Expos have had quite a few Grand Slam sluggers on their roster. Gary Carter leads this parade with seven slams for Montreal and 11 overall. Hubie Brooks had hit six, Tim Reigns and Tim Wallach five apiece, and Ron Fairley and Bob Bailey four each. Marquis Grism is a spectacular is a speedster, not a slugger, but he hit the only Expos Grand Slam in 1991. The slam came early in the year on April 28th against the St. Louis Juan August, uh, against St. Louis's Juan Augusto. The eighth inning homer broke a 5-5 deadlock and sent Montreal to a 9-6 win. 
Grissom was drafted in 1988 and rose quickly through the Expo system to reach the majors in August 1989. His first big league hit was a run-scoring single to center field off Fernando Valenzuela, and his first home run came off Cubs ace Greg Maddox September 11th. 1989 at Wrigley Field. He was able to keep the ball. Two, because Cubs' fans customarily throw visitors home run balls back on the field. So there we go. Marquis Grissom, card number one in our 1992 baseball card set. Let's see if I can... Uh, oh, there we go. If I... I'll try and get the angles right to where you can get at least a slight glimpse of the hologram. Uh, these are, are always much nicer to see in person if you do have the sets to see uh, the design of the photos and the way the hologram feature works. But I won't read the, the top titles on everything here. I'll just do the player name. Ken Caminetti with the Astros is card number two here. All right. Career Grand Slams won Ken Caminetti's first career Grand Slam on July 29, 1991, set off a barrage of bases loaded blasts in both legs. On the following day, Ken Griffey Jr. of the Mariners and Boston's Carlos Quintana both hit Grand Slams. One day later, three Grand Slams were hit by Jack Clark of the Red Sox. The Twins is Ken Hervick and Robin Ventura of the White Sox. And the Padres... Uh, Tim Tufel brought this stretch of seven slams in five days to an end with his own four-bagger on August the 2nd. While playing in the Astrodome, Houston batters generally hit a respectable number of grand slams each season, but they came up empty in 1990, and Caminetti hit the only one in 1991. His slam came in the fourth inning against the Cardinals' Brent Smith and was a game-winner. Caminetti came to the majors for good in 1989. He hit 10 home runs that year, four in 1990, and pumped up to 13 in 1991. He possesses a strong throwing arm and has made a living by diving over the restraining rail in front of the dugout in the dome. So there you have it. Card number two in our set there. Uh, Ken Caminetti. I'm trying to see what's the best position for that one. That one's just a tough one there. Let me see if I move these here a little closer. And see if I can get him, maybe. Oh, there you go. You can see a little bit of color there now. You could see me, I guess. You could see me in the <laughs> off the reflection. I'm trying to get it to where you see a good view of... Well, you can see the, the shadow, the holographic shadow that way. Maybe that might have to work on that one for now. We'll, we'll adjust these other ones here too when we get to the next one. So number three in the stat is Fred McGriff with the San Diego Padres. I think they probably take pictures of the local area where the players play ball. Because that looks like something you would see in San Diego. I can see the palm trees and things like that. So, Fred McGriff with the San Diego Padres, career Grand Slams, three. Fred McGriff is the only major leaguer to hit, it, hit Grand Slams in consecutive games in 1991. On August 13th, the, slu the slugging first baseman hit the second slam of his career against Mark Portugal of the Houston Astros. This third inning homer gave the Padres the lead. But Houston came back to win 12-9. The next day, McGriff delivered in the first inning against the Astros, Jim DeShales. This time, the four runs he drove in stood up for a 4-1 Padres victory. McGriff's car first career slam came two years before while he was playing for the Toronto Blue Jays. He hit two homers on July 21, 1989 against Seattle. 
including a slam off Gene Harris when the Padres traded Roberto Alomar and Joe Carter to Toronto for Tony Fernandez and McGriff in December of 1990. They knew they were acquiring a quality hitter. McGriff hit 125 home runs in just four years, and he added 31 more in 1991. So there we have it, our third player in the set here, Fred McGriff. Let's see. I guess I just need to figure out, see if I, maybe if I do it like that. Let me see if I can do that with this one too. Change the angle of, there we go, the angle of the display. It does, does help out a little bit. Let me check this one too. Oh, there we go. A little bit better, a little bit better. Let's check with number four. There we go. Uh, there's Felix Jose with the St. Louis Cardinals for card number four in the set here. All right. Career Grand Slams won. Bush Memorial Stadium with his deep center field and cavernous power alleys is certainly no home run hitter's paradise. And the St. Louis Cardinals certainly are not a home run hitting team. Over the past six seasons, the number of grand slams the Cards have hit can be counted on the fingers of one hand. And one of these was by Bob Forsh, a pitcher. All right, let me do a refresh on the chat. I saw that one there, Robert. Nice. <laughs> let me refresh both of these so I know where I left off. The Cardinals brass hope that Felix Jose, their young right fielder, will develop into a genuine slugger. He hit 16 homers in 1999, the year he came up to St. Louis from Oakland in a trade for Willie McGee. However, in 1991, his forte was doubles, 40 of them with only eight round trippers. Jose's only grand slam came while he was still with the A's. July 15, 1990, Oakland was playing host to Milwaukee. And Jose ripped a Chris Basio pitch for a first inning homer. Will the cards do anything to help this youngster along? Sure, they have moved in the fences for 1992. <laughs> so there you have it. Our first four cards in the set there. Yeah, if I put them at that angle there, you get a little bit more of a better uh, preview of... Oh, there we go turn the angle a little bit more you even get more of a, a reflective ooh that was a nice one there let me see if I can get these adjusted so we get the maximum effect out of the 3D type look almost gives them a monochrome type look there like that let me see no, I think it's just the way the, the light hits this one here that gives it a little bit of a blue tint so hopefully that helps a little bit there hold on let me check something real quick here For a second I got the mail delivered today already I was gonna say whoa they're really early today okay so as I get into these next four I'll move these four out of the way in just a second here just give us a, a little bit of effect there you can see my height my hands reflecting there so without further ado I'm gonna put these four down so that we can put the next four on I'll call it my higher tier I got two kind of sections there we can put um, each card on and I think if uh, if I put it on the higher section it gives it a more visual display which makes it nicer so here we go card number five is Jack Clark with the Boston Red Sox Jack Clark with the Boston Red Sox all right so career grand slams nine they do not call Jack Clark the Ripper for nothing. Over a 17-year career 
with five teams, Clark has smashed nine grand slams amongst his 335 home runs. His first slam came as a member of the San Francisco Giants, May 30th, 1977, against San Diego's Dave Ormeister in a game the Giants lost 12 to 8. The second his second slam on June 27th, 1978, also came against the Padres, this time as a pinch hitter in a 9-1 Giants route. When Clark victimized Pittsburgh's Don Robinson for his fourth slam, May 29, 1982, he also clouded another homer. That blast gave him four home runs and 11 RBIs in two games. Clark hit a career-high 35 homers for St. Louis in 1987, including his sixth Grand Slam on May 24th off Houston's Mike Scott. Following a year with the Yankees, Clark was traded to the Padres. On September 4th, 1989, hit his 11th Grand Slam, and San Diego won 10-9, and Clark drove in seven runs. Clark hit Slams 8 and 9 for the Red Sox in 1991 on April 8th versus Dave Steeb of the Blue Jays and on July 31st against Oakland's Dave Stewart. So there we have Jack Clark with the Boston Red Sox. Let's see if I can get this up here in a good. There we go. That looks pretty good. Getting better at this. We'll figure this out by the time we get done the set. For card number six, Albert Bell with the Cleveland Indians. Junk Wax Life Hacks, Morning Dawn, Dan is here, at least for a bit anyway. Thanks for popping in here, Dan. Been a while, nice to see you again. I'm one of my Arlingtonian locals here. A local, local person in Arlington that watches my channel from time to time. So, Albert Bell with the Cleveland Indians. His total up to this point, 1992 through the 1991 season, he had one grand slam. In his first full major league season, Cleveland outfielder Albert Bell put together a marvelous year. He batted 282, hit 28 home runs, and knocked in 95 runs in only 123 games. He excelled away from the cavernous outfield of Cleveland Stadium, finishing second in the majors to Jose Canseco in away home homers. Bell cranked 20 of his homers on the road. Bell jumped to the majors in the middle of the 1989 season after belting 20 home runs and just 312 at-bats for Class A uh, Canton Akron, known as Joey Bell. His middle name is Jo Joan, Joan. He made a spectacular debut, hitting 311 with a pair of homers and 15 RBIs in his first dozen games. He collected his first hit, July 12th, an RBI single off Nolan Ryan in his first at bat. He got his first major league home run on July 19th and cracked his only career grand slam. July 24th. The Yankees were visiting Cleveland and Bell broke a 3-3 tie with a 7th inning clout off Eric Plunk to propel the Indians to a 7-3 win. There we go. Card number 6 in this 1992 Denny's Grand Slam set. Next we have here is Sid Bream with the Atlanta Braves. Sid Bream with the Atlanta Braves. Our next card. All right, career grand slams two. Free agent first baseman Sid Bream signed a three year contract with the Atlanta Braves. In December 1990, part of general manager John Sherholtz's attempt to pull Ted Turner's team up from the depths of the National League West. His efforts paid off, of course, and Bream's contributions were substantial. Despite being injured and playing only 91 games, Bream hit 11 home runs and drove in 45 runs. More importantly, his outstanding work with the glove helped to solidify the Atlanta defense, which had been extremely sus suspect in previous seasons. Bream's 11 home runs included the two 
the first two Grand Slams of his career, one against each of his former teams, Pittsburgh and Los Angeles. He hit the first off the Pirates, Bob Patterson, on May 17th, as Atlanta won 9-3, and the second came on September 15th, as the Braves routed the Dodgers 9-1. Bream's victim was ace right-hander Ramon Martinez. For card number seven in this 26 card set. Oops. All right, let's move on to card number eight Robin Ventura. Robin Ventura is our eighth card in this mini set. Career Grand Slams for Robin Ventura of the White Sox is. Two. Robin Ventura was a baseball star even before he signed a professional contract because of his outstanding college career at Oklahoma State. He was a three-time All-America selection and was named 1987 Player of the Year and Player of the Decade by Baseball America. His 58-game hitting streak in 1987 was snapped by Stanford Cardinal pitcher Jack McDowell, now Ventura's teammate, during the College World Series. Ventura hit his first Major League home run April 19, 1990 off Roger Clemens, but he wound up the year with only five round trippers in 1991 that had rocketed that total rocketed to 23, two of which were grand slams he hit in the first one on June 18th against knuckleballer Tom Candiotti of the then of the Cleveland Indians. In a 6-5 White Sox victory, Ventura's second grand slam came on July 31st against reliever Goose Gossage of the Texas Rangers. This bottom of the ninth shot pulled out a 10-8 win for Jeff Torberg's young and exciting Chicago White Sox team. So there we have it. Our eighth card in this uh, Denny's Grand Slam set of Robin Ventura. Alright. Moving on to card number nine. Cal Ripken Jr. with the Baltimore Orioles is our ninth player to have Grand Slams at this point in his career. Sure, uh, He had career Grand Slams up to this point in his career, too. Shortstop Cal Ripken Jr. put together a spectacular season in 1991. He batted 323, socked 34 home runs, and drove in 114 runs, all for a sixth place team. Ripken Jr. also played in all 162 games for the Orioles, extending his consecutive game streak to 1,573 games, second best in baseball history to Lou Gehrig's 2,130. This banner season earned Ripken Jr. the American League Most Valuable Player Award and the Sporting News Major League Player of the Year honors. Ripken Jr. has hit two Grand Slams in his illustrious career. The first came September 14, 1982, the year Ripken Jr. was named American League Rookie of the Year. In the second game of a doubleheader against the Yankees, Ripken connected off Mike Morgan in the sixth inning, leading the O's to a 5-3 victory. The next season, Ripken Jr. hit his second Grand Slam, and it came July 13th against the Oakland's Tim Conroy in the fourth inning of a 6-2 Baltimore win. So let me put these four cards in the books and put our next four up as we finish off here. I'll have this all down pat so that when we start, when we do it next time. Cal Ripken Jr. up there in a prominent spot. Card number 10 is Ryan Sandberg with the Chicago Cubs. Ryan Sandberg with the Chicago Cubs. Career Grand Slams. Two. Second basemen are supposed to run fast, field well, and turn the double play with grace. 
Get one who can hit, and that's a plus. Get one who can hit with power, like Ryan Sandberg, and you are ahead. Rhino can do it all. Run, field, throw, hit, and hit with power. He is the first player in Major League history to hit 40 homers in a season in 1990, as well as steal 50 bases in a single season, 1985. He has won nine consecutive gold gloves and holds a fistful of fielding records. His 40 home runs led the National League in 1984 and gave him the third highest single season for total for a second baseman. He might one day challenge Joe Morgan's record for most career home runs by a second baseman. Samberg's homer include homers include two grand slams. He hit the first on May 31st, 1983 off Frank Lacourt of the Houston Astros in a 12-10 Cubs victory or Cubs loss, sorry. His second came on September 12, 1991, versus Jim Lewis of the San Diego Padres as the Cubs came from behind to win 10-8. So there we go. Card number 10 in this mini set. Ryan Sandberg. All right. Card number 11 is Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill with... The Cincinnati Reds. Career Grand Slams, only one for Paul O'Neill. Look at the list of Cincinnati's career Grand Slam leaders, and it's easy to recall the big red machine of the 1970s. Johnny Bench tops the chart with 11. George and George Foster, Dave Concepcion, and Tony Perez are close behind. No wonder the Reds won six division titles, four pennants, and two World Series in 10 years. But those days are gone, long gone. With Eric Davis traded to the Dodgers, the Reds hope that outfielder Paul O'Neill will conf- continue to develop into a first-class slugger. Not much of a power hitter in the minors, Paul boosted his output considerably to 28 homers in 1991. Manager Lou Piniella, himself a good hitter and batting coach, is convinced that O'Neill can improve even more. Paul had a big offense day June 7, 1989, against the Giants. He went 3 for 4, drove in 6 runs, and hit a pair of homers, including his first Grand Slam in the second inning of Jeff Brantley. The Reds won 12 to 5. So there you have it. Card number 11 in this 26 card set. Moving on to card number 12. Luis. Polonia with the California Angels. Luis Polonia. Career Grand Slams 1. California's outfielder Luis Polonia's first Grand Slam on August 14, 1990 was a triple milestone. His first career Grand Slam, the 18th inside the park homer in Angels history and the Majors 74th inside the park Grand Slam since 1920. When this feat was first noted, Polonia's homer hit against the Yankees. Tim Leary was also the second inside the park slam in Angels Annals. The first was done by Rick Wright Chart. June 25, 1967. Polonia is not known as a slugger. In fact, he has tallied only 13 home runs in five major league seasons. Polonia started his career with Oakland in 1987 and quickly became a consistent hitter for average. He put together a 17-game hitting streak and finishing the year at 287. Polonia's average has been at or near 300 ever since his career hitting average. It's 302 going into the 1992 season. (laughs) That's nice there, John. Yeah, um, our junk wax life, life wax. John Fishman's the one that told me uh, I should highlight these cards if I had any in my set. And I said, oh, I have the complete Denny set 
from 1991 through 1997. So that's what we're going to do on Saturdays here. And then, of course, Dan here is saying, I have some of those Denny's, old Denny's holograms somewhere in my collection. I should find those. <laughs> there you go. So there we go. That's uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12. We're going to move on to 13, and then I'll move those down and make space for the next four here. But the next one up to bat is Cecil Fielder. Cecil Fielder with the T Detroit Tigers. Cecil Fielder. Uh, career Grand Slams up to this point through the 1991 season. Uh, imagine a slugger hitting 95 home runs over two seasons. 51 in 1990 and 44 in 1991. And not winning the MVP award either. That is exactly what has happened to Cecil Fielder, who also drove in 265 runs during those two years. Since coming back from Hashan Tigers of Japan Central League, Fielder has finished second to Ricky Henderson in the 90 MVP voting and second again to Cal Ripken Jr. in 1991. Cecil's circuit clouts have included three Grand Slams, two of them coming in 1990 and one last year. He had his first one in the Kingdom on June 1st, 1990 in the second inning off Mariners pitcher Matt Young as the Tigers won 9-7. The second slam was also home run number 48, a second inning blast off Oakland's Mike Moore on September 23rd as Detroit shut out the A's 6 to nothing. Fielder cracked his third grand slam October 3rd, 1991 against Dan Petrie of the Red Sox in the 8th inning of a 10-5 Tigers win. So there we have it. Our 13th person with home runs being highlighted today, Cecil Fielder. Card number 13 out of 26. Get that up there in his place of prominence there. Moving on to number 14. Next is Cal Daniels with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Cal Daniels with the Los Angeles Dodgers is our next one with a little Hollywood side behind him. Career Grand Slams 4. Cal Daniels came to Los Angeles in 1989 in a trade with the Cincinnati Reds. He played only 11 games in Dodgers Blue before injuring a knee and sitting out the rest of the season. 1990 was another story, though. Daniels hit 294 with career highs in home runs, 27, and RBIs, 94. He also became the first Dodger ever to hit, a, hit three grand slams during one regular season. Daniels tallied his first Grand Slam in a wild game against the Phillies. He hit it off of Don Carmen in the fourth inning, but the Phillies won 15-12 in 11 innings. His second slam came against Houston's Mark Portugal in the second inning of a, on September 4th. The Dodgers lost again 10-8. Ten, Ten days later, Daniels completed the trio sixth inning in a 10-4 Dodger win. Daniels added his fourth career Grand Slam, April 24, 1991, against Doug Sist of the Braves. The Dodgers won this game, too, by a score of 8-4. to four. So there you go, card number 14, Cal Daniels of the Los Angeles Dodgers. All right, next up to bat here, card number 15 is Brian McRae with the Kansas City Royals. Brian McRae with the Sandy, the Kansas City Royals. Sorry about that. Career Grand Slams won. Seattle Mariners star Ken Griffey Jr. has had the thrill of playing with his father, but Kansas City's young outfielder Brian McRae enjoys the honor of playing for his father. Brian made the the jump from class. Double A in the middle of 1990 season, and his father, Hal McRae, became the Royals manager in May of 1991. Young McRae is a switch hitter, and in his debut season, he hit two homers, one from each side of the plate. He followed them up in 1991 with eight more round trippers, including his first career grand slam. On July 14th, Kansas City was in Detroit and hammered the Tigers. 
18 to 4. Bryant contributed two homers in this route, including an eight inning slam off right hander Don Gackler. So there you have it. Card number 15 out of the 26 card set. Brian McRae. Card number 15. Card number 16 here is Howard Johnson with the New York Mets. Howard Johnson with the New York Mets. Career Grand Slams for Howard Johnson are six. Howard Johnson is not only a three-time member of the 30-30 club, hitting 30 home runs and stealing 30 bases in the same season, but he is well on his way to passing Ted Simmons to become the leading home run hitter among switch hitters in National League history. Among his 197 home runs, 178 in the National League are six Grand Slams. One for the 1984 World Champion Detroit Tigers and five for the Mets. Oddly enough, five uh, of Hojo's half dozen slams have come against right-handed pitchers while he was batting left. The five righties he has victimized are Bob Gibson, not in the Hall of Fame, not the Hall of Famer of Milwaukee, Danny Cox of St. Louis, Randy St. Clair of Montreal, and Ed Lynch and Les Lancaster of the Cubs. Johnson's most recent slam was hit only one as a right-handed batter. It came June 18, 1991 against Southpaw Dom Browning of the Cincinnati Reds. The third inning homer gave the Mets the lead and they went on to win 7-5. There you go. Card number 16 out of 26 for Howard Johnson. There we go. Moving on to card number 17. It's a lot easier to read the back. I mean, it, it has it down here, if you can see it, ever so small. But... The next one is Greg Vaughn with the Milwaukee Brewers. Career Grand Slams for Greg Vaughn as of 1991. The Brewers have a Grand Slam tradition dating back to 1970, their first year in Milwaukee. In 22 seasons, they have hit 60 Grand Slams, including a club record eight in 1980. 32 different Brewers have connected for Grand Slams, with Cecil Cooper, the franchise leader, at 5. The 32nd Brewer to hit a slam is their latest young star, outfielder Greg Vaughn. After an outstanding minor league career, he made the big club in 1990 and was named the team's Rookie of the Year. He hit only 220, but ranked second among American League rookies for homers at 17 and RBIs 66. Uh, last year he exploded offensively reaching his average 24 points while clubbing 27 home runs and driving home 98. Uh, Vaughn hit his first Grand Slam on June 16th against Gene Nelson of the Oakland Athletics. Uh, coming to bat in the bottom of the ninth with the score tied, the bases loaded and none out, Vaughn's blast gave the Brewers a sudden 11-7 victory. All right, let me move these, these four cards in the books and then move number card number 17 up to its spot of prominence here. I'll straighten these out later. I think I mix mix some of these up a little bit. Card number 17 here again, Greg Vaughn with the Milwaukee Brewers. All right. Moving on to card number 18, which is Dale Murphy of the Philadelphia Phillies. Dale Murphy of the Philadelphia Phillies. Got to remember to do it the camera to get the right angle. Career Grand Slams, 5. Going into 1992, Dale Murphy stands on, 
only four home runs short of the magic 400 mark, a standard that most almost guarantees eventual induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, throughout the 1980s, Murphy was one of baseball's most dependable sluggers, hitting 36, 36, 36, 37, 30, 29, and 44 homers in six consecutive seasons. He is also one of only nine players to win back-to-back Most Valuable Player awards. Murphy, Murphy's clouts in, include five grand slams, four for the Braves, and one for the Phillies, to whom he was traded in August of 1990. He hit two slams in 1978 on June 5th versus the Pirates' Kent Tukulve on July 2nd off the Giants. Fight of Blue. Sam Slam number three was also against San Francisco on August 17th, 1980, and the number four came against the Phillies, Doug Bear, on July 9th, 1987. He hit his l- latest slam August 19th, 1991, in the 11th inning off the Cubs. Les Lancaster winning the game 6-2. to two. So there we have it. The next Grand Slam hitter up to bat is Kent Hervick with the Minnesota Twins. Career Grand Slam 7. Kent Hervick hit his most recent Grand Slam July 31st, 1991 as the Twins were driving toward the American League West pennant. The strapping first baseman drove a second inning pitch from Scott Sanderson into Yankees Stadium's seats as Minnesota defeated New York 12-3. Herbick was, has been hitting grand slams for a long time, one each in 1982, 84, 89, and a trio in 1985. His first occurred on June 10, 1982 against Kansas City's Mike Armstrong, and his second came April 16, 1984 off the Angels' Angels' John Curtis. Herbeck was just back from a shoulder injury when he hit three slams in 1985, two of them only four days apart. Brian Fisher of the Yankees served up one on July 18th, and Baltimore's Storm Davis was victimized on uh, July 22nd. On August 15th, Herbeck did it again again against the Mariners Bob Long. Herbeck belted his sixth slam September 12th, 1989 and a seventh inning blast off Toronto's Dwayne Ward. So card number 19 in this 26 card set Kent Herbeck. Next up to bat we've got Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds with the Pittsburgh Pirates of course. Everybody knows Barry Bonds. Career Grand Slams won in leading the Pirates to a pair of Eastern Division titles, but then faltering in the NLCS. Barry Bonds has put together two remarkable seasons. In 1990, he batted 301 and hit 33 home runs and had 114 RBIs. These numbers earned him the National League MVP award and recognition by the Sporting News as Major League Player of the Year in 1991. He grabbed no awards, but still hit 292 with 25 home runs and 116 runs batted in. There must be some connection between hitting grand slams and winning the division. The Pirates, who went without a slam in both 1988-1989, hit five in 1990 and five more in 1991. Of course, they won the National League East both times. Bonds contributed one slam to this two-season barrage. It came May 22, 1990, with Pittsburgh playing in the Astrodome. Barry took a third-inning pitch from left field or left-hander Don Schatzer out of the park, and the Pirates went on to beat Houston eight to four. For card number 20, again, Barry Bonds. I'll get a little bit of it there. 
right, card number 21, Matt Noakes. Everybody knows Matt Noakes. Ask Kevin's card collecting and more. Matt Noakes with the New York Yankees. Card number 21, career grand slams for Matt Noakes. Four, managers who put their faith in a long ball can look to the Yankees for justification. Over their entire histories, the Yankees have hit 251 grand slams in 249 games and have won 222 of these. A winning percentage of 892. Matt Noakes has hit only one of the 251, but he also hit three slams as a member of the Detroit Tigers. Noakes hit his first two slams in 1987, his rookie year. The first came in 19. It, April 30th off Mike Cook of the California Angels. The Tigers won that game 12-4. On September 26th, Matt hit his second slam, this time against Toronto's John Cerruti. Detroit took a 7-3 lead on Noakes' homer, but the Blue Jays recovered to win 10-9. And Matt's third slam occurred May 29, 1989, against er Eric King of the White Sox in a 4-2 Detroit win after being acquired by the New York Yankees. Noakes hit his fourth career slam September 23, 1991, off Mark Lee of the Brewers. The seventh inning homer gave the Yankees a 9-8 win. All right. Seeing the chat moving a little bit there. Um, Don, you do really love all the hard work you do. And thank you for teaching me the history of baseball. No problem there, Robert. Cards in my car with our Posada. Says, I'm still here. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Appreciate you very much. Let me start displaying the next group of four here. All right, so here's Matt Noakes with the New York Yankees getting displayed up with our next one in our 26 card set being Jose Canseco with the Oakland Athletics. There you go, Robert. Career Grand Slams for Jose Canseco was three. Jose Canseco is a feared hitter not only for the number of home runs he hit, 209 in less than six full seasons, but also for their prodigious length. His first career Grand Slam was no exception. The site was Toronto's Sky Dome. The date, March 22, 1990. Conseco poked a sixth inning Frank Wills pitch off the glass of the center field restaurant, roughly 500 feet from home plate. Conseco added two more slams in 1991. He hit the first of these July 5th off Tom Gordon, D. Gordon's dad, as Oakland defeated Kansas City 9-3. The second came September 15th, and again the place was the Sky Dome. This time, Jim Aker was the Blue Jays' pitcher in a game the A's won 10-5. Conseco is also one of only 15 players to hit a Grand Slam in the World Series. He did it in Game 1 of the 1988 series off the Dodgers, Tim Belcher. But this was Conseco's only hit of the entire Fall Classic. So card number 22 out of 26. Jose Conseco. Boom! I, know, I knew you'd like that one there, uh, Robert. Alright, card number 23 next up to bat is Jay Buhner with the Seattle Mariners. Seattle Mariners. Get that one to really flash there. There we go. Getting the Seattle Mariner to flash there. Kind of like a... <laughs> don't want to make you dizzy. <laughs> All right. Career Grand Slams 2. Jay Buhner has a pair of Grand Slams to his credit, but his most prodigious home run came with only one man on base. On August 18, 1988, the M's were in New York, where Buhner began his major league career. In the first game of a doubleheader, he became only the fifth player ever to hit a homer into Yankee Stadium's center field seats. 
His first career Grand Slam came earlier that year. While Buhner was still a Yankee on June 11th, he smashed a Doug Sisk pitch downtown as New York defeated the Orioles 8-6. Buhner hit his second Grand Slam June 1st, 1990 against the Detroit Tigers. The Mariners tr- struck for five runs in the first inning against Jack Morris, sparked by Buhner's slam, his first homer of the season. But the M's lost 9-7. One night later, Seattle hurler Randy Johnson no-hit the Tigers 2 to nothing. So again, card number 23 out of 26. Moving on to our next card with two more to go after this one. Our next one is Will Clark with the San Francisco Giants. Will Clark with the San Francisco Giants is card number 24, career grand slams, three. Will the Thrill Clark has hit three regular season slams, and two of them came against the Philadelphia Phillies. He hit his first in the fourth inning, May 28, 1988, off Mike Maddox in a game the Giants won 8-5. to five. The second on July 14th, 1991, sparked a 17-5 to five San Francisco route. Clark went 5-6 for six that day with seven RBIs, and his fourth inning slam came off rookie Amalio Carreno. Clark's third slam occurred August 20th, 1991, against Robert Malakut. Of the Houston Astros, the seventh inning blast propelled the Giants to a 9-3 victory. Clark is one of only five players who can take credit for a grand slam in LCS play. His came in 1989 when the Giants ousted the Cubs four games to one. Clark put on an awesome offensive show, hitting 650 with eight RBIs and two homers, including a game one slam off Greg Maddox, Mike's brother. So there you have card number 24, Will the Thrill Smith with the San Francisco Giants. All right. Moving on to card number 25, Ruben Sierra with the Texas Rangers. Ruben Sierra with the Texas Rangers is card number 25 out of 26, career Grand Slams won. Since moving to Texas from Washington before the 1972 season, the Rangers have been out homered by their opponents both at home and on the road still texas has produced a few sluggers who have contributed grand slams to the rangers record book jeff burrows the american lakes 1974 mvp hit five grand slams in just two seasons and third baseman larry Parrish hit four including three within one week in 1982 outfielder ruben sierra is the best Rangers hitter ever. He is one of only eight major leaguers to hit 30 or more homers before his 22nd birthday and is the youngest switch hitter ever to do so. His home run total stands at 139 in just six seasons. In 1991, Sierra rebounded from off an off-year to hit 307 with 25 home runs and 116 RBIs. His career, however, included only one grand slam, and it came September 6th, 1990, in the first inning off Chris Cordiello of Kansas City. The Rangers won 12 to 1. Sorry about that. Let me silence my phone here off to the left of me here. Move these four in the books here. And move uh, Ruben Sierra, the Ranger, right here. And now on to our last card of the set is Joe Carter with the Toronto Blue Jays. Joe Carter is our final card in this 26-card set. Career Grand Slams, four. After six years with the Cleveland Indians and one season with San Diego, Joe Carter made a real bid for stardom in 1991 with the Toronto Blue Jays. He hit 33 home runs and had a 108 RBI lead 
Toronto to leave Toronto to the American Lake East pennant. But Carter had been a slugger even before the Cubs. His original team traded him to the Indians in June of 1984. Carter's four career Grand Slams were all hit for Cleveland starting in 1984 and ending in 1988. His first one came August 12, 1984 against the Yankees. Ron Guidry in a 6-0 Cleveland win. He hit two more in 1986. One against the Twins, Frank Viola, on June 12th as Minnesota beat the Indians 9-8 with five homers of their own, and the second on September 4th against the Brewers in a 14-4 Indians rout. When Carter hit his fourth slam, April 22nd, 1988, the Indians' Corey Snyder also hit one, marking the 40th time teammates have accomplished this feat in the same game. There we have it, card number 26 of 26, Joe Carter with the Toronto Blue Jays. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that set there. Let me just real quickly here put it back in order here so I can put it back in my box to file it away. Let's see, we got 24, 23, 22, 21... 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There we go. Put it back here. Put it in my little top loader box that keeps this set organized for now. And I will put it off to the side as we get ready to rumble. Now, we'll get ready to get into this uh, 2020 Tops Archives Baseball Blaster Box in our search for some fire. All right, let me move these. I know I'll readjust these again anyway, but I'm just going to semi sort of put them in place here. I think that's about how I usually arrange them. I'm getting it down after doing it a few times. But hopefully everybody is doing well out there. Still looking ugly outside. But that's okay. This is always my highlight of the day. Is spending time with people in my channel. And going over baseball history. So without further ado. We'll get this box opened here. Okay, let me uh, open the top here, pull out the cards, lay everything out in the fashion in which I usually do. Put that right there. Oop. Put that one up there. Let's set this in the back here real quick. Oop. Sorry about that, I bumped my phone. Okay, she, don't worry, we didn't have no earthquake going on here. All right, let me put this back here real quick. So you know we're open up the archive. That when, I, when I lay them down like that, that meant, I didn't even notice that one. That one had a little, hopefully it did, didn't bend a card or anything. We will put our, this one right back here. Actually, I'll do it like I did yesterday and let you see my eyeballs there. I'll keep an eye on that. One exclusive 1964 Tops Giant card inside set. Uh, what was I gonna? Oh, I know what I was gonna say in regards to this. I was watching uh, Faith, Family, and Sports, and he uh, he opened up a blaster of these and two packs of Archives Baseball. Him and his wife had a pack war, but uh, when he opened up his blaster box, he he pulled out a blue border. I'm trying to remember who it was for sure. I can't remember if it was Bobuchet or, but and he didn't know for sure if that was just the normal ones. And I, I sent him a message when I commented to his video that no, the blue border is a short print version because most of these have white borders um, but I do believe they do have autographs and different short prints of the box toppers but I have not pulled a blue a blue border yet so maybe I'll get one of those blue borders out of my archive or possibly even an autograph but without further ado let's go ahead and 
get ready to grip and rip this box here. Let me lay these packs out like I normally do so you can see as we progress through the box here. Just kind of uh, throw in the archives here. Put the first pack first and foremost. Again, I will put them up in order as we do get them and stuff. The, the 1955s, the 1974s, the 2002s, and the inserts. Okay, so without further ado, let's get ready to rock and roll. We got four watching, nine thumbs up. Getting so close to my ten thumbs up there. Could have had a couple more people watching here, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and have some fun and do a little bit of gripping and ripping. Oh, that's a nice one on the back there. A-Rod, Alex Rodriguez. So here we go. Jorge Soler with the Kansas City Royals is our first card out of the box. Okay. Let me scoot these over just a hair. There we go. All right. And then Shin Su Chu with the Texas Rangers. Right, and then we've got our 74 throwbacks. Um, Atlanta Braves shortstop Dansby Swanson. And we got next up to bat our Minnesota Twins designated hitter Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz. Boom! There we go. New York Yankees outfielder Dave Winfield, Hall of Famer. Boom, there we go. Yordan Yamamoto for our insert card for the uh, 1955 throwback style cards. Now we got a boom, there we go. Frank Thomas, Frank Thomas for 2002 and Alex Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez for our other 2002 card there. Okay. Check something real quick there on my phone. Okay. All right. So let's move on to pack number two. Pack number two. See if we can pull any kind of heat out of this box. I have pulled a few uh, insert serialized cards. No autographs yet. Of course, the, the, the 1955s here, they do have the, the on-card, uh, not on-card, the, the printed autographs on them. Zank Grinke, Zach Grinke with the Houston Astros. Nolan Arenado with the Colorado Rockies. And, oh, boom, there we go, Mike Trout. Mike Trout with the California Angels. Then next up here, we've got uh, Sandy Alcantara with the Miami Marlins pitcher. Uh, Mike Moustakas with the Cincinnati Reds, second base and third baseman. And Ted Williams, outfielder for the Boston Red Sox Hall of Fame. Then we got Andres Munoz with the San Diego Padres 2002 rookie card. No, 2020 rookie card. That's why they had to put 2020 on tops there, even though it's the 2002 design of the cards. But it is a rookie card. Shout out to Kevin's Card Collecting and more for his uh, San Diego Padres there. And then Andrew Jones for the Atlanta Braves. Andrew Jones for the Atlanta Braves. Moving on to pack number three. Nothing late breaking or earth shattering yet. That's kind of weird. Only one insert card so far. But that's okay. Sometimes that could be a good indication. Maybe we'll get a hit. Sure hope so. We'll see what happens here. Boom. There we go. Aristides Aquino with the Cincinnati Reds. One of the powerhouse rookies this year. And then we got Tom Glavin, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer Tom Glavin with the Atlanta Braves. Boom, followed by Hank Aaron with the Milwaukee Braves. All right. Boom. OK, 
Cal Ripken Jr. shortstop for the Baltimore Orioles. My PC player, Hall of Famer. Now we got Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb, wow. I got to cover up Cal Ripken Jr. already because Ty Cobb showed up. Detroit Tigers outfielder. Boom, 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 boom. We got a, us a short print card. Willie Cast Castro. Willie Castro. Willie Castro. Shortstop for the Detroit Tigers. That is a short print card. Because it's not the regular, not the regular white border, it's the gray border. Let me get that in the penny sleeve for now. get that in a penny sleeve and a top loader here all right penny sleeve and a top loader that is we finally got another hit in a blaster box maybe that's why we weren't get, getting too many inserts but it is a rookie rookie card for willie castro shortstop for the detroit tigers I think that's just a variation card because it's has the number for the base. Yeah, the 468 is the base, but it is a variation base. There we go. So it is the base card, but it's a variation base. Again, 61 of 99. Cool card. Nice cool card there. And then we've got next, we got John Means Gold Cup card for the Baltimore Orioles. And Pedro Martinez. Hall of Famer Pedro Martinez. All right. Right into the middle of the box here. Pack number four. All right. Get ready to move on. Boom. There we go. Larry Doby, Hall of Famer with the Cleveland Indians outfielder. Wade Boggs Hall of Famer. There are a lot of Hall of Famers in these archives. That's what I what I do like for sure too. Wade Boggs with the Boston Red Sox. Next we've got Willie McCovey. Willie McCovey with the San Francisco Giants. Hin Jin Ru with the Toronto Blue Jays pitcher. Slide him in the back here. Corey Kluber with the Texas Rangers. Slide him in the back here. Then we got the Sports Extra Mark Kixaria. First baseman for the California Angels. Insert card. Tex powers up the Angels infield. So let me put that with my insert card sets here. This one's not an insert. This one's a hit. Just so you do know. And Ichiro! Ichiro! There's my Ichiro. 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 Future Hall of Famer. I'm just going to put him up there in front. And Juan Marcal. Or Marchal. Marcal. With the San Francisco Giants Hall of Famer. Alright. Moving on to pack number five. As we get down to the final few packs here. Pack number five. Boom! Hall of Famer Jim Tomey with the Cleveland Indians. Seth Brown with the Oakland Athletics rookie card. Then Gliber Torres with the New York Yankees. Gliber Torres. Then we've got a Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher rookie card, Tony Gonsolin. Clayton Kershaw, Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher. And we've got Judge and Torres, power producers for Judge and Torres for our insert card. Then we've got Chris Bryant with the Chicago Cubs and Austin Meadows with the Tampa Bay Rays. All right, moving on to pack number six. 
Pack number said 10 thumbs up. We got our 10 thumbs up. Thank you, everybody out there. 10 thumbs up. Thummies up. Thummies up. Thummies up for me. <laughs> Let me fix something real quick here. Update my, my chats. Ten thumbs up. We're doing good so far. Um, there we go. Alex Young with the Arizona Diamondbacks rookie card. Shout out to Kevin's uh, card collecting and more. And even though he congratulated me ahead of time last night, believe it or not, the Arizona Diamondbacks beat the Seattle Mariners. But we'll see. We got game two tonight. We'll see what happens tonight. Maybe we'll 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 win this game tonight and split or we'll see what happens. <laughs> I can't watch the game, but I was watching the way, the 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 game on my MLB app where I can just see as the pitches come in and stuff, not like on TV and stuff. But uh we were, I was kind of keeping an eye on the score in the game while me and the wife and the daughter were watching the the Lion, Lion King movie. All right, Paul Goldschmidt with the St. Louis Cardinals. Kevin's PC player right there. If I can get more than one of those, I know where one of them will be gone. Matt Chapman with the Oakland Athletics. Then we got Mike Piazza, a Hall of Famer with the New York Mets catcher. Frank Robinson with the Baltimore Orioles outfielder. Here we go. Going to do that song again. Sandman. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 Mariano Rivera. Mr. Sandman. <laughs> Put him back right here with the insert cards. And then uh, Andralton Simmons with the California Angels. And Michael Chavez with the Boston Red Sox. All right. Any last pack mojo? We already got one hit. Maybe we'll get a second one. You never do know sometimes. But we'll see. And then after this, we will do our box topper. See who we get in that one. All right. We got Jeff McNeil here with the New York Mets. Outfielder and third baseman. Kyle Schwarberger with the Chicago Cubs. Outfielder. Joey Votto with the Cincinnati Reds, first baseman. Then we got Randy Johnson with the Arizona Diamondbacks, pitcher. Throwback card for the Hall of Famer, Randy Johnson. Um, Zach Gallen, rookie card for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And we got an insert card. Willie Adamas with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Gold Cup card. Insert card. And then we've got uh, Wilson Contreras with the Chicago Cubs. And Matt Olson with the Oakland Athletics. Do you like the way they give you that photograph on the back with the stats for the years and stuff? Awesome, awesome, awesome there. All right, time for our box topper. Time for our box topper. Let's see what we can pull out of this one to end our stream for the day. Oh, hopefully I didn't give you enough of a hint there. Do our reveal here. Let's try and close my eye here so that I don't even see the card that I'll be revealing. See if I can guess with you guys. Alright. So let's start doing the slow reveal here on our box topper. Ooh, Kevin would like this one probably. It's a San Diego Padre, that's for sure. A San Diego Padre. 
And it's a San Diego Padre. Looks like a young guy. A young guy. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Shortstop, Fernando Tatis Jr. Ooh, Kevin would like that one. He is hot. Fernando Tatis Jr. is hot. So in usual fashion, let me read the back of the card here. Tatis sets multiple marks. Lead-off legend. Fernando Tatis Jr. puts his name in the record books multiple times on August 8, 2019, setting a forceful tone in an eventual 9-3 victory over Colorado. The Sterling rookie hit a solo home run in the bottom of the first inning that made him the youngest player in history to lead off consecutive games with a round tripper. It also was his 22nd long ball overall, the most ever in a season for a shortstop before his 21st birthday. Fernando opened six games with four baggers, which established a San Diego Padres record. So there you have it. Fernando Tatis Jr., so not too bad really Haley Deegan NASCAR fan and Cardinals fan 1990 in the house don't forget thummies up thummies up thummies up for me appreciate that um, I'll go over just the highlights of the hits we had here we did have fun earlier with the 1992 Denny's Grand Slam Saturday set that we reviewed going over 26 different players that have had uh, different levels of Grand Slams throughout their career and then we did pull this here last, the shortstop, Fernando Tatis Jr. with the San Diego Padres. I'm pretty sure it's the first one of these that I have from my box toppers. That was cool. And then we did pull the short print rookie card, Willie Castro with the Detroit Tigers, gray border. Awesome. It says, you're the ump. What do you call if a... If a... Pitch doesn't come to a stop. What do you call if a pitch doesn't come to a stop? Huh, a ball. I could see the answer there. That's the only reason why I answered it. But Willie Castro, short print, 61 out of 99. So that adds another short print to my little collection there. I can put that in the front there now right there and of course we got another Mr. Sandman I think I got three of these now we got a power producers Judge and Torres we got a uh, Yordan Yamamoto rookie card we got a Mark Texeria first baseman for the sports extra card and a Willie Adamas with the Tampa Bay Rays gold cup card so hopefully you all enjoyed this today with the fireworks and all the fun we had today got just a, a vintage hat on and this is I think the shirt I'll wear for my Denny's uh, Grand Slam Saturday set reviews as um, next week we'll have 1993 Denny's Grand Slam set to highlight in the stream so other than that let me back up my chair here and turn my camera around so I don't scare too many people by being too too super close that's what uh, Robert Hohn accused me of being so big. Maybe he was, maybe he was watching me on his big screen TV. <clears throat> Let me get a drink of water real quick here. I think I walked my voice out. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and. Uh, turn my camera around good thing we ended when we did <clears throat> this has been Donald Blomdahl Hall of Fame veteran sports cards and collectibles having been live to you from Arlington Washington really do appreciate everybody being here spending this Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon if you're on the East Coast uh, with me during this stream today 
and I'm looking forward to my weekend. Not that I'm not going to miss my regular attendees to my streams. I really do appreciate you all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you do visit some of my content too and leave some contents on previous streams too. So that gives me also maybe some viewing time. Uh, my viewing time has been going down, but that doesn't really affect once you're once you got your thousand subscribers, you're kind of locked in. It's just uh, when people aren't watching as much, then it just slows things down and YouTube doesn't send people to your channels. But I'm not worried about that because I'll just, I like to do my content, get my content uploaded and do that this way. Let me scroll down so you can see my shirt. I'm wearing my Disneyland celebration types type shirt. In case you were wondering here. This, this from Disney World in Florida when me and the family went back in 2015. But just wanted to share that with you real quick. I'll be wearing this t-shirt uh, for the, the series, the Denny's Grand Slam Saturday series. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to wrap things up for today. So again, this is my signature sign off. Y'all have a great and wonderful t-shirt. Cards in my car with our Posada says, nice t-shirt. <laughs> Thanks, sir, Robert. Appreciate you being here. Haley Deegan, um, Junk Wax Life Hacks, I'm sure probably took off. But uh, And we did have uh, John Fishman was here. My wife stopped in real quick. Rob uh, Robert Hohn was here. And so really do appreciate everybody stopping by and visiting when you all could so until next tuesday while we continue with our player biographies we will see you again then all right take care lord bless you and have a wonderful and blessed weekend take care bye now